In running your own design company, the name of the game is client acquisition. Today we're gonna to talk about the 1% rule. About four years ago, when I started freelancing, I had this really unrealistic view of client acquisition. I used to think that if I could just get my foot in the door, or if I could just schedule an interview with this person or this company, I would probably land the work. I really was super naive about the whole process. I've realized over the years that it is so difficult to find a client that is a good fit for you and that you are a good fit for them. One of the things I've learned over the years is that the success rate for client acquisition acquisition, if you're doing very, very well, is about 10%. So this is the 1% rule. 1% of all conversations that you have about landing work will lead to work. If they are out of the blue, spontaneous, what have you, that's just the way it is. If you can get your hit rate to 10% from conversation to landing the work. So 10 out of every 100 conversations you have about working with someone ends up in paid work. You are doing unbelievably well. The 1% rule for me is very accurate when you're talking about, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm a, I own a design company and I'm a contract web designer. The chances of that becoming anything good via them saying, hey, I know this person or whatever is about 1%. Why? It's typically because that individual you're speaking with doesn't have any idea who you are or what you do truly. And to find the right client, it takes actually a really long time of working with that client to even understand if you're a good fit. I remember one of my favorite clients when I first started full-time freelancing, I, I just loved working with them. They were, they were great to work with. They had cool projects for me to work on. After working with them for about a year, we parted ways and I think everybody was okay with that but I looked back on that client and I realized that they actually weren't a very good fit for me that took a year to understand the other aspect of the 1% rule that I think a lot of people in the industry forget is cold calls cold calls are a very weird thing I'm gonna do a separate video about them but I haven't done cold calls in a long time and the 1% rule is why. If you can hit on 1% of your cold calls, you're doing pretty good. I know that sounds insane, but cold calls are not an effective way to land work as a freelancer. And if you are doing a cold call, you need to learn the art of the cold call. Why am I even bringing up the concept of the 1% rule? Is it to scare someone away from freelancing? Is it to be dogmatic and not sound like, you know, this is a good situation? No. I think the 1% rule is helpful for people that are starting freelancing or starting in a design business because they, they really need to understand you're not going to land work just like that. Even if you're in talks with 10 individuals or companies, the chances of you landing three of them is pretty low. I know that sounds kind of like a downer, but if somebody had told me that when I first started and quit my job with no income, I would have really appreciated that because I went into things with a very unrealistic expectation of what could be. I would have a family friend go, hey, I know somebody that you might wanna work with. And I'd go, okay, cool, well, I've got a client. And that's just not the case. And even if they wanna work with you, odds are you probably don't wanna work with them. Anytime you get a referral like that, that's somebody kind of throwing you a bone, odds are they're looking for really cheap work to be done or they just aren't gonna end up being a good client. I know that sounds tough, but I've dealt with this way too many times. It is something I steer away from. On top of the client not choosing you, at this point, I'm not really apt to choose them. I'm very picky with who I work with. I turn down potential clients a lot based off of very minute details in their offer. It allows my business to stay afloat. If you take on every piece of work you are offered, you will not do well. That's where the business of design comes in. If you don't have that ability to kind of be a business person, and a creative, you're gonna struggle. You have to be really shrewd with who you work with. You have to be willing to walk away and you also have to be willing to have hard conversations about money, about expectations, about contract, everything. There is so much of a business in freelancing that really scares a lot of people away and I wish they would just come into that with a accurate mindset. That's actually why I've started making videos again is because I want to help people 
have a realistic understanding of what it takes to be a freelance designer. If you apply this philosophy to your freelance business, I guarantee you, you will sleep better at night and you have a more realistic view of what you need to do to accomplish your goals with your company. Becoming profitable quickly relies on practicality.